right guys welcome to another video um today i'm going to be recapping and grading every single move made at the transfer window for the main vct leagues uh these will just be the four roster moves made for ma the main rosters this will not include any like sixth man changes or anything like that and so yeah without further ado let's get into it uh, just quickly before we get into it, um, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Uh, really helps me out I'm trying to get to 100 subs at some point soon and keep going from there. I don't know. We'll see how far this can go. And yeah, let's get into it. All right. So, first up here, we have Genji, who I'm going to give a B minus. Uh, they subbed out Secret for Sylvan. Uh, while I'm not super familiar with Sylvan. Uh, I think if this team believes that he's going to be an upgrade over what they had before, I will kind of trust them here. Uh, my main worry is that you're making roster changes after you played one game, of one tournament against the team that got second place at that tournament. It just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. But, I mean, obviously you can kind of tell in a team environment if something's not going to work out in terms of just vibe and even in like scrims you can kind of you can probably tell but i feel like maybe they should have given it a little bit more time but then again they would have had to wait until after the split is over to make another change so not really a ton of room for error here and then next up we have paper rex who their move is not official yet but the rumor is that they're going to send something uh, from the Japanese circuit. Something is in the player, something, not just somebody. Um, I do think Paper X just needed to add something new into this team, make make some kind of change, uh, whether it be, I don't even know who for, but something is a great player. Um, he's been dominating the Japanese challenger scene and should be a pretty good player. At the franchise level once he gets some experience um that like that inexperience could come out against top teams like maybe drx and the rumor right now is that they're going to drop divai for him which i'm fine with but there's also been benkai's name floating floated around in that uh in that whole conversation which doesn't make sense to me. He's your IGL. You keep him. Unless there's... Like... Unless you're, like, still bad after this split. Then I don't see why you should be getting rid of Benkai. Um, but again... Another concern I have... I actually don't know why I gave this a B plus. I just think the player and is really good and the team needed to change, I guess. Um... But the roles on this team wouldn't make sense. Uh, which I'll, I'll check something. See our page here. Something. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's been playing mostly duelist, all duelist, and obviously with Paper Rex, you already have two duelist players in Xing and Forsaken. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, but I feel like if they can make that work, this roster should actually be pretty stacked. You have Mind Freak, who's pretty good on the controller, Jing and Forsaken entering, and something maybe, depending on how they do the roles there. Then you have Benkai, who's actually pretty good for acting IGL, and his calling is not bad. So overall, I like this move. I'm going to give it a B plus, but I don't love it. And now we have Crew, who I'm giving an A for picking up Kesnit, uh, bringing him back to Crew. Um, he, in my mind, is still one of the best players in the world, probably top 15-ish. Uh, he's coming back to a team who is in need of an upgrade. Uh, my only real reason why this isn't an A+, is obviously removing Jandi is not the best of things. Like you would, You would rather not have to move on from him but if it means getting Kesnet, I don't really have a problem with it. I do think he could have played like the flex stuff that 
like Davies is probably gonna be playing now. But like I would prefer wait, what? I don't understand. Oh, because then there's the six men and they haven't put him on here. Okay. Actually didn't even look at their VLR page before this. But I thought crew or Kesnet to crew was already announced by now. Maybe it's not. Uh but yeah, I feel like Jean D being in the flex role would have been a better move for this team. And then removing somebody like Davies, who is actually playing the duelist for them, as far as I know, right? Yeah. But overall, really great move. Uh, gives some more life to a team that really needed it. And should make them a decent contender in the league. Maybe get some upset wins and whatnot. But overall, still not a great team, but a good move. And then finally here, we have Cloud9, who I'm going to give a B-. minus. Strictly because with the financial situation, they kind of had to make a move like this. If I was just making it based off the change of players, this would be an F, no doubt about it. Um, like, obviously, Jake and Rooney are downgrades, TA and Vanity, right now. Uh, but as somebody who trusts MC to scout good players and develop them into better players than they were before... I think this move does have some long-term potential. Uh, we don't know the exact roles of this team right now, but every single one of these players has flexibility, so they should be able to figure it out. Um, and if you expected these guys to pick up great players, I really don't know what to tell you, because they're not going to pick up any known names because they're going to ask for too much money, and Cloud9 won't be able to pay them. So, picking up Jake and Rooney was probably their best option, but MC should be able to develop these guys into great players. And yeah, with that, that's going to be the video. Um, let me know what you guys thought of these moves in the comments below. Uh, I do think the Cloud9 grade is probably going to be my most con controversial one. Uh, yeah, uh, should be fun uh, in the upcoming split. I'll have predictions coming out soon for the first week. Uh, I'll probably do some, like, role power rankings, I guess. Like, the top five initiators and the top five duelists or whatever in each league. So, that should be fun. Uh, I was originally going to do them as separate videos, but then now I realize that there's, like, a couple days until the league play starts. So, I won't have time for that. Um, yeah, but with that, that's going to be the video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.